All right, recording is rolling. Uh, welcome to Thursday. Uh, let's uh, let's get a big picture of what's going on uh, next couple of weeks because I think this is pretty well going. So today, um, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit here at the top of the class, and then send you back to the lab area to finish that collision lab from yesterday. You guys, that's, oh, okay. And then uh, tomorrow, I wanted to get you guys through as many of those uh, textbook uh, questions as, as we can get through, and then uh, kick off uh, Monday with that also. Now. Next week's going to be a weird week. Uh, it's going to have a kind of a choppy feel to it because uh, Tuesday I have to go proctor a standardized test. Now, I actually should be back in the classroom for you guys, I, I think, uh, probably. Uh, but, well, post schedule is going to be thrown anyway. So I think I'm probably make this a reading day. So I'll get you guys your take home quiz by then. I haven't given it to you guys yet. I haven't written it yet. But uh, working on that. I'll get you guys that by, uh, by this day so that if you want to use this day to uh, do that, you can. Uh, uh, I'd still like to uh, get a Kahoot in another lab in, so I think I'll, uh, we'll, we'll probably put those on um, near the end of the section. But uh, there's no school next Thursday because uh, Veterans Day. So, yeah, so next Tuesday and Thursday are going to be a little off there. So, yeah, we'll make uh, the, the most of our time that we can. Okay. So, today's stuff. Uh, oh, top scientists for uh, energy, that energy quiz you guys turned in a couple days back. Uh, yeah, look at all those names. Yeah, oh, you guys too. Yeah, here's here's four periods. Look at owls. look at all those names, all those owls. Uh, even just to get your name up, name up here, you had to get a uh, re really good score. So yeah, awesome job. You're up here. Okay. You guys know I ask you guys really tough questions on those quizzes too. So all right, way to go. Okay. Okay. Then uh, let's go to uh, this collision lab stuff. So uh, yesterday you guys did the half of the um, the half that involves inelastic collisions, so two parts come together, like bam, they couple together and move together. Okay. That's what you guys did yesterday. You guys did a few of those. Okay. Uh, today, you guys are gonna do uh, a little bit more involved first one. You guys are gonna do the uh, elastic one, where it goes a boing, and they bounce off each other. Okay. Now that one's gonna be a little bit tougher to handle because, uh, well, the fact that post-collision, remember this is pre-collision, post-collision. Okay. Here's what you did yesterday, pre-collision, there was just you know one card of motion so, uh, initially kept one abreast. Okay. So mass times velocity in the starting one that was easy to follow. Okay. And then after they couple together, well, it was like one giant mass. So just like one giant object that you're following. Okay. But today, uh, if these are bubbling, bouncing off each other, then it's going to start all the same way as yesterday. So left half of the table is the same. But the right half, ooh, well, you got to be careful because you got to keep track of two different parts. And there's uh, more than one way to do that, but just plant that idea for now. There is a uh, one thing I wanted to mention from yesterday, though, uh, for I guess uh, those, uh, those details. Get you guys that, which is uh, I was looking at, uh, at you guys' pre-collision, post-collision uh, momentum uh, values, and of course, ideally, these should be the same number. That's kind of the whole point of the labs. Like, does this equal this? Okay. And uh, I saw uh, like three categories of uh, uh, results, right? uh, not just this class, but uh, other classes all day, and, and also uh, in the past, like past years that. Uh, in the slide, which is uh, one possibility is that these actually do come out pretty close to each other, like 22,000 units here and 18,000 units here. It's like, okay, that's a, that's a near match, so that looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, I've also seen a handful of papers where the numbers are just completely off. So like, well, I, I don't know what procedure led to that, but that might be interesting to think about. It's like, uh, if it's off, you know, like way bigger, way smaller, like well, why, why could that possibly be? Um, you know, maybe something to do with friction. That was probably one of the biggest uh, variables that we threw out the window, like, uh, assumed away. Uh, and then uh, there was a result where maybe um, maybe this happened to your group, maybe not, but if it did, if you got uh, a, a post-collision momentum that was pretty nearly half of the original momentum, and maybe you did that consistently all the way down. If that happened to you and your team, I have a pretty good guess as to exactly why that happened, like what, what procedure would have led to that. Okay? And it involves, uh, I'm gonna put a graph together with you guys. It, it does involve uh, considering friction uh, versus assuming it away. Right? So I know that was a low friction cart system. So you're assuming you know, like air hockey table, like there's no friction, but that wasn't exactly true, right? So let's look at a post collision uh, velocity versus time uh, curve. So velocity in centimeters per second and time to take, take away in seconds, something like this. Uh, post collision, that means that at time zero right here, this is at the collision point. So before all this, uh, maybe you know, some parts were, you know, one was head towards the other, and then like, bam, then they hit. Like, 
right at this point. Right? And then now they're coupled together and they're and they're rolling. Right? Okay, well, what does this graph look like, B versus T? Uh, there's actually you know, maybe, maybe two main possibilities. Right? Uh, if there was truly no friction, then what should this graph actually look like uh, for, uh, for no friction? No friction. Shouldn't the cards just, just you know, constant velocity all the way across? Right? Is it coupled together? It, they could, like, they could, if you had to track long enough, like, um, could wrap around the Earth, they would just keep going. They would never stop if there was no friction, right? Not like they'd be in orbit. Okay. Uh, but there actually was a little bit of friction. And if you push the initial cart, um, like, not very hard, so it's going kind of slow to start with, it, you may have ended up with a case of these coupled together and actually rolled to a complete stop before the end of the track. Okay. Uh, maybe not, but, but maybe. Okay. And if you did that, then in that case, this is not what this uh, graph looked like, which uh, I'm going to label this uh, no friction. That was the ideal situation that we were assuming. Okay. Uh, but if it rolled to a stop, what would this graph actually look like? Wouldn't it actually look like some version of that right there? Okay. Uh, this is with friction. Okay. And maybe that's a bit more realistic to what you had yesterday, you know, especially if they rolled to a stop. That's um, pretty well exactly what was going on. But, uh, so if you guys remember this, uh, velocity versus time. This is one of these classic graphs that you guys have seen since August in this class. Uh, do you guys remember this slope right here? What property, what physical property does the slope represent on a V versus T graph? It represents the hmm, see, rise over run. Change of velocity for change of time. Ah, that's the rate change of velocity. Oh, rate change of velocity. That's called acceleration, right? And then what about the area under the curve? Let's say the area of this triangle. What does this area represent? Hmm. See, the shape has some height in centimeters per second, some base in seconds. Area is something to do with base times height and half it out for a triangle. So centimeters per second times second. Oh, wouldn't that be like centimeters? When this represent how far the cart rolled to its stop, right? It, uh, they would call it like x, x post, right? The post collision distance they rolled to stop, right? This, if, if they rolled to stop, right? Yeah, if you have this situation. Right? Okay, so how is this graph going to explain why uh, you know, maybe you had you know, half the final momentum compared to the original momentum okay, if you ran into that situation? Right? Well, because this velocity right here is the true post collision velocity, isn't it? Like, I'll call this. The post, uh, post collision, right? and you actually would be interested in like knowing that. Like, if there's no friction, it you know, should be a constant velocity for right, for like some distance divided by some time interval, and that's how you calculated this. Was you said like, how far did it roll post collision divided by how much time did it take to get there? Right? Uh, but if you measure the stopping distance, which is like the area of this triangle, not the area of this full rectangle, but the area of this triangle, the stopping the stopping distance. Right? And divide that by the space of the time. Right? Isn't that kind of like, uh, wouldn't that actually give you an average velocity, which is like that dashed line right there, right? which uh, the distance would be represented by the area of this little skinny rectangle. Right? Do you guys see how this skinny rectangle has the exact same area as this here triangle? Right? Just took some scissors, went snip, snip, cut off this, and dumped upside down right here. Right? Ah, that would match the little rectangle, wouldn't it? So this uh, dashed line right here, this horizontal line, represents average velocity right, of uh, this cart down. Right? Uh, and do you guys see what average velocity is compared to the true post-collision velocity? It's what ratio? You guys see it's half? It's half, right? So this is the true post-collision velocity, which you guys were aiming to try to get for your calculations, but also divided by two. Ah, uh, that's why. Uh, you would have ended up with half the momentum in your uh, in your calculated values because the velocity you would have been using would have been half the value that you would have been like, uh, like intending to use to make that calculation. Right. Sure. Right. One thing about average value, I, I think I may mention this before, but uh, I forget if I just told my AP gets this, right. is uh, find average value. Um, imagine that from this point to this point, right. there's like a, like aquarium walls. Can you guys imagine an aquarium, like a, like a fish tank? And I've got a big old triangle block of ice. You guys see this big old triangle block of ice right here? I'll leave that there a couple of days, let it all melt. Right? Is it going to uh, melt down to this level? Right? That's how you figure out average value. Right? That's uh, a different perspective on saying that this triangle, this rectangle, have the same area. Right? 
All right, so if you ended up with half the momentum that you started with, and you're like, well, well why is it half? Uh, that's almost for certain why, that um, if you timed it going to stop. All right, so uh, today's stuff. Uh, today's, uh, you're figuring out what is the um, momentum before and after for elastic collision, like a boing, something like that. So I'll run through uh, an example, the numbers for you guys, uh, just to get you guys kickstarted here. Now the left half of the table, uh, I want to say it looks identical to yesterday. So suppose you had 550 gram cart and another 550 gram cart. Okay, great. Uh, and you, you mark off 50 centimeters for the first one to roll. And let's say you push it and it takes like uh, 1.25 seconds to roll that bar. Okay. What's the pre collision velocity? Uh, I want to say I used these example numbers yesterday too. So you can do a direct comparison 50 centimeters all in one and a quarter seconds. So it's like 40 centimeters per second. Right. And then and then bam, it hits the other cart that um, you know, by default, according to this table setup, I had started to rest, so it's just sitting there, like bam. Okay. Uh, the total uh, momentum pre-collision would have been mass times velocity is 550 grams times 40 centimeters per second. That's 22,000 gram centimeters per second. 22,000. Copy paste, print, right there. Okay. All right, then a uh, post-collision. Now, uh, if it was truly perfectly elastic, which actually these collision parts are pretty close to, so a pretty good model. Really boing. If these had the same mass, you guys, actually, this is one of the model examples that um, I used yesterday. So uh, there's a, I, I did make a short video that I posted to Google, Google Classroom with this too. So if they have the same mass and it's elastic, it's like, oh, boing. Like, oh, I don't have to fake it. I can show you guys right here. Okay. Dude, it's cradle balls. This, is, this would be elastic collision, right? And these two guys have the same mass. Let's see what happens. Okay. Is all the momentum and energy going to be transferred from one to the other? Let's find out. Oh, it is. And the other one comes to a dead stop. Right? Okay, so just go back and forth. But I'll stay there, right? Okay. Uh, so you know, just in my native number. Now, when you guys get back there, you can change up the mass of these things by you know, popping lab weights and stuff. But, uh, so that now what happens post-collision? Let's go to the post-collision table. Now, this one's a little bit different than yesterday. It's a little bit trickier to navigate. Uh, because you have two carts doing separate things. Uh, suppose you rope off one uh, second at time. Um, let's say you say, how far do they roll in one second? I don't know, one second. Okay. This isn't the only thought process, but this is maybe one way you could do this. Okay. So you have a timer, you time one second, and then you have one student say, where does one card end up? Where's another card end up? Uh, so if this is truly elastic, then and it's for the same mass, and the first car should come to a dead stop, just like you guys saw with Nate's cradle. Okay. And maybe the other one rolls like 40 centimeters, for example, something like that. Okay. So what is post-collision velocity of A? Zero, you know, zero divided by one. Or, yeah. And then 40 divided by one would be 40 centimeters per second for the other cart. Okay. Then multiply by the mass of things, you get zero plus 22,000. Okay. Uh, so this one has some momentum, this one has some momentum. Okay. You add those two numbers together, and you get the total momentum post-collision. Okay. And again, just like yesterday, ideally, these numbers should match. Uh, but, you know, we got real world uh, situations. Yeah, there's a little friction, there's a little this, a little that. So I don't think so. Right. You guys got any questions? All right, so you guys have uh, the rest of class to do the elastic half of the lab. When you guys finish that, just turn your page into the gray tray, and I'll give you points. So I'll walk around and help you guys out.